are we, sir? Number six, thank you. That's what you were pointing at. Again, just look at this, ladies and gentlemen, as this comes around. Such a faithful reproduction. And that essentially is what it's all about with this game. Is your sort of paying tribute to the, the whole technology that has gone on to build the, uh, the full size. So, sir, how long has it taken to make this? One year. One year, my goodness, that was very good. Uh, I mean, and does that come as a kit, or do you set to and make it, or what, what happens? No, the, the boiler I didn't make, needs to be um, see you through and cope well with it. The gears I didn't cut, but everything else is made. And the tyres, you obviously buy those, because they're more than I just want a bit of rubber. It's too much to white rank. So we're, we're talking about here, we're talking about Clayton. Very valuable cargo on the back as well. Thank you very, very much. So the modern maker's art knows no bounds, really, because now, just look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely stunning. Rustin and Hornsby fire range. Quite incredible. Have you made this, sir? I have, yes. It just used to be a flatbed lorry for a long, long while. And then we decided to sort of come up with something different. So you go around looking for small fires, I take it? Yes, I can put your barbecue out if you can. <laughs> very good. Wonderful to see. Thank you very much, sir. Now, number 11 next, which is Tasker's Little Giant. I think that's very appropriate, isn't it, really, Little Giant? firm in agricultural terms because after steam engines they went on to make equipment and I mean did you make this sir? No, I didn't. You bought it like that. Very wise. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Wonderful. Number 34 next. We are essentially we're paying tribute to the real ones. So sir just tell us when it says four inch what does that what does that actually mean? It means uh, four inch to the foot, or if you want to put it in fractions, it's a one third size of the original. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. This is Mr. Gunn with his magnificent Garrett, and again, so faithful to the original. Absolutely stunning to see. Thank you very much, sir. Now, not all steamers are steam. <laughs> Number 29, and again, what are we talking about? Well, really what we're talking about is the model maker's art, because here I happen to know that although it looks like a steamer, it's actually not. So tell us a little bit about it, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Well, this is a seven-year-old boy's dream. In 2010, he wanted steam, but of course we couldn't afford steam. I've got a repair workshop, and I said to him, Firebox at the back, all run by electricity, uh, and so I think he, he's achieved something very well. He's now fine. He doesn't like me to call him seven anymore. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much, sir. Now, come on, guys. Here we come. Here we come. With time is always at our... We struggle with time. Now, sir, what have we got here? Number 33. Quarter scale Alchin that were made in Northampton. This is a model of the Royal Chester that was made for the Royal Show of Chester. Of course, what we're talking about here is three inch rather than four inch. So we're actually quarter size, yeah? Absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for bringing it, sir. Afraid we are struggling a bit on the time front, so I'm going to have to miss one or two out. But we will just talk about Clara because. Clara's 27. So tell us what we got here. Well, you've just seen a three-inch Royal Chester. This is a four-and-a-half-inch Royal Chester. So it's the same engine, slightly bigger scale. Really? Isn't that amazing? So if you'd like to follow around, just have a look, gentlemen and ladies, because, my goodness, we have the same engine but in a different scale. Absolutely fantastic. So now we're into number 21, a Garrett four-inch. Owned by T. Stevens. So, uh, what have we got here? Here yeah, we've got Rich. Uh, I built it up six years ago, three years ago. Uh, Wonderful to 
this evening. Thank you so much for bringing it. Now, my goodness, one extreme to the other, because now we're into the big boys. So as I say, do please just be careful, ladies and gentlemen, with these uh, vehicles moving about around the, um, around the site. So first in the ring today is number seven, which is an old chin. Now, for those of you who don't know, old chin is very, very indigenous to this area because these engines were made in Northampton. So you're not going to get a more local engine. And because of that, we know the history. And the history of these engines is absolutely fascinating. Uh, this one has been so, so beautifully restored. Um, shown by J and S Skinner, single cylinder, 10 ton side valve, five nominal horsepower. And this has been restored to this absolutely stunning condition with the help of uh, National Lottery People's Millions Fund uh, and the good work and tremendous care of the Northamptonshire and Pittsford Railway Trust. Uh, so an absolutely stunning, stunning example. Please, we'll try and catch up with some of the owners when we've got them parked up. So thank you very much for bringing that today. Absolutely stunning. Owned by Northampton County Council and donated by them. So in preservation and restored to really, I suppose, without exaggerating, at least as good as it was new. Absolutely wonderful. Number one next, which is an eight-ton Aveling and Porter roller known as Katie, owned by Mr. Pugh. And this thing distinguished itself because of all the places in the world you could ever imagine that spent its working life in Sri Lanka, no less, Ceylon. But this demonstrates such an important point, which is that these engines were working machines. They had to work for their living. This particular engine obviously started off as a steamroller, was at the end of its working life was scrapped, was parked in a scrapyard. And the local farming company found it, and they said, well, we need a steamroller, we need a road roller. And because we can't really see the point of steam, we will fit a Nuffield tractor engine. So, hand-built, sort of blacksmith-made. So, although to the purest in steam terms, it sort of makes your hair stand on end. In fact, as a piece of history, a fascinating engine. Now, my goodness, we're in the big league now, aren't we? Because Sherman's engine, which I think it's fair to say is by far the most sought after, by far the most valuable of engines, and an absolutely stunning power there, really wonderful to see. Still in recovery mode. You still haven't got it going, have you? <laughs> they were towing this thing yesterday. <laughs> I must say, it looks as though it's on top of the job, though, ladies and gentlemen. I think we'll never have any trouble pulling that. Number 16, next. 16 is a Marshall S-type compound convertible roller. So this has had different guises in as much as it's obviously in a traction engine mode at the moment, uh, but was, um, was a roller. She has had six preservation owners prior to purchase by Dr. Peter McCormick from the Isle of Wight. The conversion to traction engine was completed for Dr. McCormick and the customer of So again, absolutely stunning. And all the history of these engines is so fascinating because, well, when you've been on the planet for a hundred years, hundred and fifty years, You've got a story to tell, and my goodness, they all have a story to tell. It is so, so much because of the preservation movement that we've got something to talk about because a lot of these engines unfortunately fell foul of an afternoon out with the scrap man. And um, it's only because 
of the preservation movement that we have these fabulous engines. So this one is number 12, an R3 road locomotive known as Kingfisher, owned by Alan Eaton, a very famous man in the collecting world. Seven nominal horsepower, built in 1917, and a maker's number of 14888. Number eight next, which is another of our Alchins. We're having a bit of an Alchin moment at the, at the moment, because these local engines, which are so fascinating that um, the local engines are here at the local show and absolutely wonderful to see. I think there were only sort of 200 to 250 ever made, so they were never made by the million. Uh, and that is all the more amazing that some of them have survived. And uh, again, we can't stress strongly enough how nice it is to see the local engines manufactured in Northampton. Some of them I know have travelled all over the country, but some have never really actually been out of Northampton. What number are we, sir? 11. So if I get this wrong, it's your <laughs> <laughs> Agricultural engine, of course, the whole idea was that you had a, a mobile form of power. So if you've got a thrashing box, a saw bench, all those type of things, stone crusher, your contractor, because predominantly that's what they were, they were a contractor's machine. There weren't many farms big enough to justify steam engines, so you phoned the contractor and he came with his gear. in road roller mode. This one is driven by Chris Parker. Five horsepower, ten ton, type E roller. Built in 1923 at Guildford. Uh, and has a maker's number of 10647. Shown with a 1927 road mender's living van. So they've taken the precaution of leaving off. But over in the static display, you get to see all the uh, all the ancillary equipment. Because don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, as you travelled around the country, you didn't drive home every night. Sometimes you were away all week or for all summer in certain contexts. So they brought the living van with them. This man's travelling incognito because he's hidden his number. What number are we, sir? I don't know. Who are you? 1902, Avon Quarter. Are you local here, sir? No, Coventry. So just far enough. Well, lovely to see. Uh, I mean, when was this restored? 25 years ago. Which was the time to be buying them, wasn't it? Yeah, nice and cheap. We have lost that wonderful piece of history. So, sir, tell us about Sybil. Sybil's been a naughty girl. She put her gasket just before she came in the ring. So I got her a bit late. Um, she's a boring scale barrel, single cylinder, dual purpose engine. Uh, based on the last barrels ever built, which were actually built by Gareth Slaced. Because uh, after the First World War, things were a bit difficult for money for these companies. And several companies grouped together to form the Agricultural and General Engineers Limited. And you know, companies like Barrels and Gareth and Alvin Quartz. And Barrels in about 1930 were bust, so they closed down the Fed Works. And the last few barrels were built at Gareth. And this little engine there, she's named after my grandmother, who's not here this weekend, but she's been rallying since the 1960s, and she's been working very hard on flour, but we're actually making flour. Wonderful. Well, thank you so, so much for bringing it. It's great to see. Now, a special, special thank you to this gentleman, because yesterday we had a wonderful... Uh, general public riding round in steam engines at the end of the day. And to this gentleman's eternal credit, he was the man. He provided the vehicle and we had a wonderful time. And so, on behalf of everybody,
everybody. Thank you so much for yesterday. That was very, very kind and generous of you. And the reason I'm saying that is we hope you're going to do it again today. <laughs> obviously very much road going. So speed on the road. About 15, 20 mile an hour. This was Foden's idea of, of, of really how heavy haulage was going to be. Yeah, it was the, um, well it was designed for the state track with uh, tip haulage. Absolutely wonderful to see. Thank you so much and thank you for all your efforts yesterday. Much appreciated. Now there's always one, isn't there? Look at this. Even ages ago they were coming in the ring. Come on. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, just think about it. All these things that are here today, the full size, they've had a, a wonderful, wonderful working history. And then largely due to the enthusiasm of restorers and people who just thought, well, do you know what, that is a damn shame to see that being cut up. And so they've gone into preservation. Well, I've got one more to get. I'm only an expert yeah. when uh, I I've found got, I've, I've got <laughs> what? four of them are still marked, I've still got the one to get by March. So of course, I mean, the thorny question of cost. Well, these engines, I think it's fair to say, hugely, hugely valuable. Marshall, which is what we got here, very, very famous name in in agricultural history as well as engineering history because Marshall morphed into a tractor manufacturer. They were making hundreds of different uh, agricultural implements. That particular one is an agricultural engine. Single cylinder, six engine horsepower. Built in 1900 and was first owned by Lord Derby. It later went to Perkins of Old being used for threshing duties right through the war, passing to Stoke Bruin Brickworks. Just imagine, 35 years. Uh, it was bought and restored by the present owner, N. Middleton. Now, my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, just look at that for a sight. <clears throat> Traditionally, what we like to do so we like everybody on the showground to know that we got Stephen in the ring. So what we do is we have a pop, pop, pop. So boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to count to three and then we're going to have a noise and a half. So one, two. Certainly no mains electricity. 
So to see one of these things driving a fairground must have been quite the most extraordinary thing. Absolutely wonderful to see. John Fowler of Leeds, of course, was a tremendously important manufacturer. Fowler's went on to make uh, all sorts of different machines, including crawlers, etc. But as, uh, as we say, the showman's engine, which is what's going around the ring, just about the top of the tree, and absolutely stunning to see. So thank you so much, guys. We really, really appreciate your support at the show, because without you guys, we don't have a show. So thank you very, very much for your support. Now, if I can ask you just quietly to parade round the ring and then back to your static display. Do go and talk to the owners at, the, uh, at their static display because there are some fascinating stories. We can't really do them justice in this half an hour. We have to sort of go at it like hammer and tongs to get everybody in and out. But some of these engines have some truly wonderful stories attached to them. Do go and talk to the owners. And I have to say, on behalf of the show organisers, thank you so very, very much for coming and supporting us, guys. We are very, very grateful.
two bits of lost property, including a fleece, a pair of glasses, and a gold purse. So if you're the proud owner of any or all of those, do come and uh, describe them accurately and we'll give them back to you. Thank you everybody for handing all this stuff in. Right, so as I say, we're a couple of minutes away from our vintage and classic cars, which are next in the ring.